All right, modern fail of the day. This is a Samsung uh, laser printer ML2525W, and that's the second repair. Now, the first repair I did when it was it was feeding two pages at the same time, and that's a well-known fault of this one. And it's a, it's a very small thing, but paint repair. I'll show you. It's, it's just a relay that sticks. Now, the new fault I have is that it won't even turn on. I bet you power supply problem, I bet you bad capacitor, a crapacitor. Oh no, another modern electronic fail. If you are a fan of the channel and expect superbly engineered, ultra-reliable Hewlett Packard or Space hardware, well, look the other way, because this is not it. This is consumer hardware that has been cost reduced to the bone and fails in pathetic ways, not due to engineering but due to excessive money pinching. I post this modern fails video as a public service to help other people that are guaranteed to eventually have the same issue. To add insult to injury, this is the second repair of this otherwise very decent laser printer. It had started picking up two sheets of paper instead of one, which caused a paper jam stop. It turns out the root cause is utterly ridiculous. There is a small yellow solenoid that is used when picking up a paper sheet. It has a small piece of shop absorbing rubber under the armature. Sure enough, this rubber turns sticky with age with 100% predictability. When that happens, the armature gets stuck to it for a second before it releases and the printer picks up two pages. The fix is super simple, although I did not make a video of it. Just remove the offending rubber and put something that does not stick or nothing at all. However, you have to take the whole printer apart to get to the solenoid. The irritating part is that they have known this for years and it happens to all of their printers. Yet, they have not done anything to prevent it. Like it's done on purpose? Anyhow, on to repair number two, which is similarly well known and irritating. And I can't remember how I took this thing apart. What I do remember is accessing the little relay thingy that was sticking was a whole pain. Yay! Oh! Power supply readily visible! Ooh! <laughs> it's gotten hot and oh, we already have the bad capacitors right here. This one is, is all domed out and I bet you that's the start capacitor. Not enough here. Yes. One more here. So, bet you that won't do it. Yeah, that does it. So it's all the screws at the periphery, the two here and two on the side. So I think that if I remove all the connectors over here, which I already did, plus this one, which is pain in the butt. Yeah, but then I get access to this last one. There you go. And that's it. There you go. All right. So bulge capacitor here. Another capacitor is bulged. A third capacitor that's bulged. Okay. I just have to take the board out. Well, that was hard to take off. I just pull it off. And a lot of optical sensors for things that move and an actual switch. Did I get them all? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, that's just a bracket. He lifts up. Yeah. All right. So that's brown, but that's not of a concern. This is just the power resistors. 
They get hot when they have no problem with that. It's probably a buck converter followed by some secondary supplies out of the buck converter. Yeah, we can, I can tell it's a buck converter. Here's the, uh, the shot key diode for it. My bet is that these are the starter caps for the buck converter. The word are of caution on this board. I was going to connect it on the bench to see if it works, but I notice here they tell you, they tell you it has 5 volts and 24 volts, which I see over here. And it says it has 127 volts over here, but it also says minus 1300 volts, minus 100 volts, minus 430 volts, minus 580 volts, another 1300 volts, another 1000 volts, and we couldn't find where the connectors are, and the connectors are right here. These are all the high voltage outputs, and if you look over here, this is where they, uh, they connect. There's this one, which probably is the ground, and these are all the high voltages for um, the electrostatic part of the machine, which attracts inks. So, hmm, testing on the bench. Okay, well, you, you got to be careful. Don't touch any of that. Uh, you can see the isolation trenches over here, actually. Uh, all the low voltage over there. So I got it on the bench uh, and it's just a few microamps on the high voltage so I think it can stay on the cardboard. And interestingly enough, I do have 5 volts. If I turn it on and I look up there, it has 5 volts to it. Um, but I don't have the 24 volts, so it's going to be a little tricky to test it on the bench. I'm just going to have to probably re replace it in the blind and we'll put it, wire it partially back into the machine. This one doesn't look bad, I'm going to test it since it's in the way. I suspect it's fine. Uh, I'll put a little minus sign. A thousand microfarads. Okay, we'll see what my HP machine thinks about it. Yeah, it thinks it's a thousand microfarad actually. And ESR point is a perfectly good capacitor. All right. Another crap song on another thousand microfarad, ten volts. All right, <laughs> two kilo ohm ESR and fifty-eight nanofarads dead. All right, so and this one was easy to spot. All right, it has a curved dome on the top, so dead giveaway. So that one no good. <laughs> This one, 470, 35 volts. It's six microfarads with in the ASR 25 ohms dead. So we'll replace them with good Japanese Rubicon, the high temperature, long life ones. 1000 microfarad, 10 volts, and 470, 34, 35 volts. And this one we put back the original, which tested plenty good. Okay, we got one more over here, which is also dead. I can see it, it's all doomed out. Okay. Another thousand microfarad, two ohms, that's no good. It's down to 100 microfarad. Already 90% died. Okay, so one more of these. You can also tell how much bigger the uh, high reliability caps are compared to... That's the... The El Cheapo basic one on, on the left and the high reliability one on the right. 
big difference in price and size. Okay, any other ones? There's a big one there. There is a whole bunch over here, but I think it's all. It's it's. I bet you it's it's only the green ones that have uh, that are affected by the capacitor plague. The black ones are good ones. Oh yeah, the green caps and capacitors. They are the worst. We had a previous encounter with them in my HP display and the same green ones had failed. We even took a look-see inside and it was not pretty. All charred and dried out. A good capacitor should look like the one on the right. But that's totally abnormal. Well-made electrolytics lasts for a very long time. These modern Chinese ones are just badly manufactured. So I try to put it back like this, but it doesn't come back up, which makes me think they are interlocks. I tried also with the switch down. I didn't do anything. So because of the high voltage, you might need to have it reconnected before it even turns on. So I have to reconnect it all and test it. All right, we feel confident. So I remounted it with all its screws in there. And will it come back up? Yeah, it does. It's uh, it's green. Yeah, it's happy. It's nice. At least it's not nice. It's naughty. <laughs> this is the second repair for getting that uh, stuff going. So two repairs. In the meantime, my uh, laser jet, my HP laser jet uh, six from. The 1990s is still going strong, no repairs. That was easy, no thousand volt charge. Yeah, it was a <laughs> oh, it, it, It's an easy repair. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I bet it prints. Click it. Yeah, works. The whole thing taken down by three bad capacitors. Ah, 